This is going to be a complicated video. If you're not specifically interested in RPGs and the problems you'll face when making them and how I chose to overcome them, you're going to have a bad time. Save yourself the hassle and go elsewhere. However, if you are intrigued, this could save you hundreds of hours should you ever make one yourself. The game that my friend and I made, Santa's Atnas, was a broken mess. In the original release, although the world map and battle screens had been tested, they hadn't been tested together, so it led to small problems like the game being impossible to complete. It's now had a massive overhaul, and I mean it. Although the graphics, menus and storyline are identical, the game's completely different. Sort of like a nice guy in Hitler's body. Both versions are available for download in the description of this video. Try each of them out for just 5 minutes and see how much of a difference this makes. If you're making a game, take note. What I'm talking about here is how the game feels. From something as small as having the right button perform an action, to being as big as justifying 20 minutes of grinding for a new, expensive spell. Although this level of polish and playtesting is taken for granted, games without it are horrible to play. Before I did anything to it, I played through the game in its original state. I didn't even bother making notes at this point, I just wanted to get a feel for what worked, what didn't, and ultimately, what impression the game left. Surprisingly, although the beginning of Santa's Atlas was too hard and confusing, and the ending was too easy, the middle part was really fun. I found myself stranded on a snowy island where I could choose to fight one of two different enemy types. One was hard, the other… impossible. I ended up having to slowly grind against the easier one, retreating quickly if I encountered the other sort. Bad game design? Perhaps. But I enjoyed it. All of a sudden, it was testing what I had learned. My characters were making the transition from noobs to end boss beaters, and this was the challenge they needed. This was one of the things that I wanted to build upon. Firstly, the game's controls were horrible. You use the arrows to move about, shift to do some things, control for others, and enter for the rest. To equip items in your second slot, you had to hold shift whilst clicking. It's okay for me, I know the game. But for anybody else? Impossible. Now, WASD does the same as the arrow keys. Nobody will notice this in-game since they'll start with their preference and stick with it. Next, I reduced all commands down to the same key. The go-to button, spacebar. Oh, and escape to open the menu. Before, you had to click on items to highlight them and double-click to buy, but I shifted this so they highlight when your mouse cursor is over them and are bought on a single click. Brilliant. Although I was used to the game's controls, this immediately felt better and made it more fun to play. Next I moved to the battles. In the original game, there was no balance. The spells, ranged weapons and melee all worked at level 1, but as your character grew more powerful, melee became overpowered. Ranged attacks did less and had no advantages, whereas magic did good damage but quickly used up MP which needed to be replenished. If you want to make an RPG, you had better like spreadsheets because that's what I needed to do. I began typing up all of the weapons, magic spells and stats. Not for the fun of it, but in an attempt to balance the game. The goal was to make different playstyles equally viable but uniquely different. It came together nicely. Melee wouldn't just make you better with swords, but would also increase your maximum health. Ranged attacks do less damage, but speed up how often you can do them. And levelling white and black magic will make spells more potent and also increase the rate at which MP regenerates. That was my goal, and if you think it's simple, you're not seeing the bigger picture. But if you think it's impossible, you don't nearly have as much faith in the power of playtesting as you should do. The secret is to reduce the variables down to the bare minimum. You don't want to be trying to balance a thousand different variables at once. You need to focus on two, get those to balance, and then slowly introduce more, relying on extensive playtesting to keep things reasonably fair. I started a new game of Santa's Atnas, making one player fully melee and the other fully ranged balancing the effectiveness of ranged and melee throughout the course of the game. The original game made melee weapons better than ranged in three different ways. The level multiplier was higher, the melee attack was stronger, and the base damage of the melee weapons was greater. These combined meant that it inflicted massive amounts of damage within about 10 minutes of gameplay. I could have been there for months balancing these elements, but instead made ranged completely identical to melee. Easy. The only difference now was balancing the amount of health gained from melee players against the increased speed of attacks that ranged players would have. Being a ranged character still gives you more HP per level than a magic character does, so the difference in health didn't matter too much. However, by the end of the game, ranged characters could be 25% faster than melee, giving them the advantage by having more turns to attack or to heal with. 
Great, so the game starts balanced, but melee weapons become increasingly underpowered as it progresses. I could have balanced this in a number of ways, but wanted to do it in a way that didn't upset the other mechanics. My solution? Each shop area you encounter in Santa's Atlas sells more powerful items than the last. All I have to do is to ensure that they sell melee weapons that are more powerful than their ranged counterparts. I found this easier to fine tune than level or skill multipliers, which would have altered the balance across the entire game. There you have it people. More powerful weapons aren't just there to reward you, they're for sneakily balancing the characters with other class types. Once I was happy that ranged and melee characters were equally viable, I played through again with black magic and melee. The idea of balancing damage based on character level, ability, amount of MP, rate of restoration, enemy difficulty and the weaknesses and so on terrified me, but in practice, it was very simple. Ranged and melee are based on three elements, your level, skill in that area and the base damage of the weapon. But black magic doesn't have this third multiplier. This means that it will become comparatively weaker as the game progresses. So to compensate, I upped the multiple in other areas. I gave each enemy type a specific strength and weakness to reward playtesters who bother to grind and to grow familiar with particular enemies, and introduced a more powerful version of each of the three main black magic attacks later on in the game to give back the damage advantage that black magic users had earlier on, which is once again offset by the amount of MP it drains. It also makes them have to pay for a better spell, much like how melee and ranged characters have to invest in better equipment. I properly tested melee, ranged and black magic, but white magic is different. It doesn't help you to beat the enemy, only to save yourself. Plus, even without specialising in it, you can still heal enough damage to protect you from a single attack. I made the perks of levelling up white magic that you could heal more damage, but would also eventually access spells that let you heal your partner at the same time, making your white magic guy a dedicated healer. I loved random damage when I first made Santa's Atnas. Most of the attacks were one third based on your stats and two thirds random. I removed this since I'd like there to be more of a direct link between being a higher level and consistently inflicting more and more consistent amounts of damage. Even melee and ranged characters, the simplest types in the game, end up unlocking different attack types later on. Normal attack inflicts good but consistent damage. Thrust is more randomised but is ultimately worth it since the average is higher than normal. And the last was Sever, which deals smaller amounts of damage, but repeatedly does so, once again doing more than the standard attack in total which should hopefully balance it against the immediately satisfying standard slash attack. It also keeps all three attack types relevant as the game progresses. I did the same with Ranged, though the second wound attack does less damage but slows the enemy down, kind of like a less powerful version of the slow spell. In the original game, these attacks weren't balanced, but now, all character classes should have plenty of different options to choose from, which should give the game considerably more depth. <gasps> Would you rather deal big damage than nitty gritty things like poison, confuse and slow? If so, you're like me, and this game perhaps reflects my biases since I made these less common attacks super effective in an attempt to compensate. Casting slow at the beginning of a fight practically halves the amount of attacks the enemy will inflict, and protect will improve your armour and give you regen. By making them more useful than a standard attack, I'm hoping that players will experiment with these spells rather than to only use the default attack command, which is both boring and more difficult to win with. I did the majority of the testing in the Excel sheet, where it's very quick and easy to change character builds and to try out different attacks. It would probably have taken me 20 times longer had I loaded the game up and tried to balance it that way. A master Excel sheet with all of the game's levelling and damage formulas is necessary if you're making an RPG. I hate armour in games. It's never clear just how much of an impact it has. It becomes a necessity, but not a rewarding one. In the original game, it would protect you from a percentage of the damage inflicted, but that makes the armour early on in the game not worth buying and the stuff at the end massively overpowered. I'm super proud of what I changed it to. In each area, you'll find several new armour types. The cheapest will protect you from 40% of damage, the best, 60. This means that even the worst in a zone will protect you from a decent amount of damage. But I added another variable. The more expensive the armour, the higher the maximum amount of damage it will protect you from. So cheap armour might do you in a particular area, but the expensive stuff will absorb a slightly higher percentage and will also stop attacks from creatures in the next area, which you'll have to cross through before reaching the next shops. Suddenly, all armour has a purpose. I also show in battle how much damage is inflicted and how much is absorbed by the armour so that players have a visual guide to how much their armour helps. I went through the entire game with different character classes and combinations of upgrades. 
Compared with the original game, I made it easier to level up since I enjoyed being rewarded for grinding and more level ups gave me more opportunities to customise my character into the character class I wanted. One of the hardest things was balancing how much money and XP you would get from each enemy. I wanted two enemy types in each area, one who rewarded more experience and another for more money, but I opted for a simple, harder enemies give you more XP and money. I made it scale with how much more expensive the later equipment was. And there you have it, I had fixed the game's core problems. To me, the transformation was complete. But the proof was in the playtesting, so I invited my top friends to test it out. What happened next may shock you. Maybe. Find out in the next video. Excuse me, old man. Oh, bloody hell. What he means to say, madam, is that we need to borrow your boat for our quest of almost certain peril. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't risk damage to this antique boat. There's absolutely no chance you may borrow it. We'll be careful. Oh, okay then. But be a quick lad. Blast. We need another boat, Santa. We must get to Atmos's island and stop him from doing whatever it is that he's doing. It's bound to be something evil. I mean, look, his island's all grey and, and, and shit. All right.